This video is brought to you by Captivating History. Origins For someone who became arguably the most infamous emperor of the Roman Empire, Nero had quite a strange beginning. Born Lucius Domitius Ahenobarbus, Tineus Domitius Ahenobarbus, and the ever-conniving Agrippina the Younger, Nero spent much of his childhood without his birth parents. His uncle, Caligula, then Emperor of Rome, furious to discover his two sisters were conspiring against him, exiled Agrippina to the Pontine Islands, where she remained until his death. Shortly after that, Nero's father met his demise, and Nero was left in the care of his aunt, Domitia Lapita the Younger. This period may have been the happiest and most balanced of his life, as he could pursue his love of the arts while still living in a stable home. Caligula grew more and more unhinged as the years passed, and eventually the people had had enough. He, his wife, and his daughters were stabbed to death in 41 CE. Claudius, Nero's great-uncle, took over as emperor. In a political play, Claudius recalled his niece, Agrippina the Younger, back from exile to make her his fourth wife, thus thrusting Nero into the spotlight. Agrippina was never one to be satisfied with what she already had, and it became her mission to maneuver Nero onto a path of becoming emperor. A few years into her marriage, she convinced Claudius to formally adopt her son, which placed him in a much more likely position to achieve her hope of ultimate power. She also made sure he was getting access to the best education possible, while doing everything she could to lessen the possibility of Britannicus Claudius's younger son, rising to the role that Agrippina desperately wanted for Nero. Nero had no real interest in being emperor. He loved the theater and spent much time singing and donning costumes to practice parts from plays. He didn't have the ambitious thirst that gripped his mother and longed to spend his days immersed in the arts. A boy becomes a man and a murderer. At 16, Nero was married off to his stepsister, Claudia Octavia. Keeping power within bloodlines was necessary at the time, and incest was not uncommon. Nero's stepfather's health was failing, and a short time later, he died, leaving Nero to be emperor at the young age of 17. The cause of Claudius's death is unknown, but given he was showing some preference towards Britannicus at the time of his death, it is not unreasonable to suspect Agrippina of murder. There are many convinced she is the one responsible. With Emperor Nero now comfortably on the throne, Agrippina was determined to rule Rome as she pleased, using Nero as her puppet. For a few years, her son was content to let her do so, but power corrupts, and as the years passed, Nero grew hungry for the same power that had driven his mother to ensure his position. Nero's sudden desire to fulfill his duties didn't set well with his mother and tension erupted between family members. Nero's first act in his bid for real power was to do away with his brother, Britannicus, by blatant poisoning at a communal dining table. Next up, his very own mother. Nero had to use all his theatrics to slay her, for Agrippina was smart and resourceful, having been a part of the ruling family for years. He attempted to capsize her boat and drown her purposefully, but she escaped unscathed. Nero did eventually succeed in his mission, as Agrippina the Younger was killed on a beach by one of Nero's soldiers, left to spend the rest of eternity six feet underground in an unmarked grave. Favorite Pastimes – Drama, Sports, and Death By then, Nero was in his early twenties and already into the second affair of his marriage. The first woman, a freed slave named Acti, had little power or say in matters about the emperor. His second love, however, was ambitious and had grown up in nobility. Papia Sabina was married to a man in Nero's inner circle, but given Nero's power and position, the man had no choice but to let Nero and Papia do as they pleased. Nero was bored with his first wife, jumping at the opportunity to end his marriage, exiling her once Papia became pregnant with his child. Citizens of Rome loudly protested Claudia's banishment, for she was much loved. But Nero did not like those who disagreed with his choices, and as retaliation, he married Papia and had Claudia brutally murdered. By then, Nero relished being emperor, 
exerting his power over others at every opportunity. He still had a passion for drama, forcing his subjects to listen to him sing for hours on end, purely for his own entertainment. He also adored sports and spontaneously entered the Olympic Games, much to the misery of other competitors who were then obligated to lose to the emperor. Sports and theatrics seemed trivial compared to Nero's favorite pastime, execution. Nero took great delight in ordering the death of anyone who dared anger or disagree with him. Friend, family, or stranger, if you dared look at Nero the wrong way, he could, and likely would, have you killed. The emperor's sexual fantasies also intensified. Although he was married to Papia, he was a poor husband, delighting in lavish sex parties where he would often prey on men, women, even children. Sexual Deviancy Drunk with power and past the point of redemption, Nero became more and more erratic. His thirst for sexual deviancy and murder was beyond control. He married three more times, in a bizarre and unofficial ceremony to a freed man named Pythagoras, to a senator's wife named Statilia Messalina, and finally to a young boy named Sporus. Arriving at the palace as a slave, Sporus had been castrated to retain his youth, therefore feeding Nero's perverted sexual appetite. Nero had no inhibitions with what he wanted. He killed Statilia's husband through forced suicide so he could legally marry her. Nero also kicked Papia's pregnant belly in a fit of rage, which ultimately led to the death of her and her unborn child. Aside from his official partners, Nero was known for forcing himself upon his senator's wives. He was a tornado for anyone who crossed his path. No one was safe from the emperor's desires. The Great Fire In 64 CE, before Nero killed Papia and descended into full sexual lunacy, a large portion of Rome went up in flames. For six long days, the fire ravaged the city, killing an unknown amount of people and destroying 90% of the city's structures. There are varying accounts of how Nero behaved. Many claim they saw him singing from a rooftop, which may have prompted the saying, Nero fiddled while Rome burned. It is largely believed that Nero purposefully started the fire. Shortly after the flames died down, Nero set about building himself a palace to rival all others. His Domus Aurea, Golden House, a gigantic structure, included a 20-foot statue of himself. Rumor dictates that he had been ruminating about how best to create a new, magnificent palace to be remembered by. The fire was conveniently timed. Nero, wise to the fact that people believed him to be responsible for the destruction of the city, needed to find a scapegoat. He chose Christians. Nero had thousands of them brutally and publicly murdered as punishment. This earned him little trust, thrusting the empire into greater instability. The End of the Julio-Claudian Dynasty Public perception of Nero rapidly declined after the fire. Along with the persecution of Christians, Nero raised the taxes of his citizens, another decision that did not sit well with the populace as they were trying to rebuild their homes and businesses. After Papia's death, Nero's rule spiraled as he raped, married, and murdered his way through the empire. As Rome's people became angrier, Nero alienated anyone who might have been initially faithful to him. Instead, they became hungry for his blood. Realizing he had few friends left, Nero fled to a villa with Sporus and a few others, including his secretary, Epaphroditus. Seeing the growing dissent and disgust among his countrymen, Nero realized his rule was quickly coming to an end. Unknown to Nero, his senate had agreed that he must be kept alive in the hopes of an heir. Wanting to die in his own terms, he commanded Epaphroditus to murder him, ending the bloodline. Nero, one of the most grotesque and perverted emperors in history, met his end on June 9, 68 CE. To learn more about Nero, Check out our book, Nero, A Captivating Guide to the Last Emperor of the Julio-Claudian Dynasty and How He Ruled the Roman Empire. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button 
and subscribe for more videos like this.